shocked when I told her I'm not white, I am black. I started noticing I was being taught that I was black, but I didn't look black. Hi, I'm Danielle Romero. Thanks so much for being with me here on my channel, where we've been talking about American identity and family stories and how those things uh, intersect. And I've been going through a little series on here where people have been sending me old footage and videos to watch and talk about with you. And it's been un incredible. And if you're interested in watching some of those uh, student debates from the 1950s, I'll link to those uh, at the end. But this one was a little different. Uh, someone sent me, it looks like it might be from four years ago. It's from The Guardian. Uh, and it's called, You Don't Have to Be Black, or You Don't Have to Look Black to Be Black, The Complex Racial Identity of a Tiny Ohio Town. And it's short. It looks like it's like eight minutes or something. But it looks like this might be in the Appalachian foothill area uh, where stuff starts to get interesting. And if you've been on my channel, you know that I have Creole ancestry from Louisiana. Um, and... I've definitely found records that have kind of referred to uh, like Redbone heritage. Um, in fact, one of the first times I went to Louisiana uh, on this like family story journey, um, someone playfully referred to me as a Redbone and I literally did not know what that was. Um, I knew the band. Uh, but I didn't know what it was. And I think it's very similar to like the Melungeon um, and things like that, which I'd love to cover on here. So we're going to watch this and let's talk about it. It looks fascinating. And if you have a video that uh, you'd like me to react to or watch with you, let me know. I've got my coffee and let's get started. I'm excited to watch this. With a lot of the people that lives out here, you probably wouldn't take them to be black people. You might not look black, but you got the black blood into you. I've lived here all my life. On my job that I had worked at, they took me to be white. And my best friend, she uh, took me to be white. She was shocked when I told her I'm not white. I am black. Okay. This is kind of like <laughs> the entire uh, journey that I had been on these questions. Uh, to say, well, I'm white, I'm black, she's white, he's black, whatever. Um, is it a skin color? Uh, is white a skin color? I, I don't think we can say that it is because, I mean, I don't know. Like, I can see her features for sure that she has African heritage, but what does it mean to be black? Why not just say, well, I have African heritage? Let me know just how, how you are reacting to her so far and what you think about her. This was a really good suggestion. I am a black person. And it was, well, you're, you're not that. You think you are. No, I know I am. I was raised that way. But I was also raised, as mom would say, it doesn't matter what color your skin is. We all serve one God. Now, as you know, this is my home. Over here is my daughter's home, Jessica. Everybody else in here, we're all kin folks. That's how this community got to be mixed with white and black. It was from the black children. My grandma, she was half Turk, half black. My grandpa was a white man. My mom registered me as black. My mom was a, she wasn't as fair complected as I am. She was a light tan brown. My dad, he has German. Irish, white. Well, his mother. German, Irish, and white. Like, <laughs> I don't know, just separating it like that's really funny. Like, um, what country is that white part from? <laughs> was a white woman. His dad was a colored man. And then as I grew older and I got married and I had my children, I registered my children as black. I have found that. Most of them in this area goes as black. We've got maybe two, three families that considers themselves being white. But the rest of us in here, we consider ourselves being black. You know this country is precious, always have been, and it never will grow out of it. 
I was in the service in 66. Yeah, I circle black, Negro. He said, you can't circle that. I said, that's what I am. Well, he kind of smiled and he said, uh, circle this. I said, okay, which meant Caucasian. I didn't show my collar, but I know what I was. And I ain't gonna tell you about my race. My mom raised me as Negroes. Oh, I had a lot of people ask me, say, why did your mom raise you as a Negro? I said, that's what I am. They said, yeah, but you don't show it. I said, it's gonna come a time where white won't accept you and the Negroes will accept you. I said, I'll, I'll wait it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you can do. You'll shout the victorious. You'll oh, yes. break through the blue. Yes, yes. Some golden day break oh, yeah. for me and for you. Amen. Growing up, I was always taught that I was black. I started into school and um, didn't really think much about it until I got into the... So I've got stuff I want to say. I'm going to hold most of it to the end. But I think what's interesting is this idea of you have these children and they're being told you're black. Like this is who we are. This is our ancestry. And this is who you are right now. But they can see themselves. They can see themselves in the mirror. And I find it interesting that they're seeing themselves and they're not saying like, um, I'm white you know, or I'm pink or whatever. They're saying I'm black, but I'm light. They keep saying I'm black, but I'm light. And, and I'm, I'm very, very fascinated by this. Um, we'll just, we'll talk about it after. Elementary, I'm gonna say around about third or fourth grade. That's when I started noticing the difference. I started noticing I was being taught that I was black, but I didn't look black. Um, other children didn't view me as black. Even some of those other kids made fun of me because why are you saying you're black when you're white? It wasn't until I reached about junior high and then I realized I'm white. That is what I am. Yes, I know I was raised black and was told I was black, but I am white. What black person has blonde hair, blue eyes, and fair complexion and can hardly tan besides burning? I'm white. You, you see like her mom there and... Um... What's interesting, I think, is with, with each generation, uh, you know, things are changing, right? If you're bringing in people from outside your community and they're getting married and they have different backgrounds. Um, and so, again, there's this tension of like, well, do you have African ancestry? Yes. Do you have Irish ancestry? Yes. Do you have whatever? Um, but to try to put people in these boxes, it's strange. Now, am I saying that she has dark skin? No, obviously she doesn't. She's recognizing that as a child. And, and there's this confusion of like, well, which box do I check? What box do I belong in? What group do I belong in? I don't think anything good can come of that. I don't have to look black I to be black. I know she don't look black. But she has got black in her. She's right. She's got a lot of different kind in her. But I am her mother. I stand on the black. <laughs> she did not stand. Only for so long of a time she stood as for black. When she got into school, into Waverly School, she let the people in Waverly change her thinking, her feeling. I didn't. I still stood for what I was, what my mother told me I was. I didn't care what I had to go through. I still stood for it. When I finally made the decision to go as white, I did feel guilty about it. It did in a way break my heart. It's nothing against my family. And it doesn't mean that I don't like black people or love black people or care for black people. I do. And like I told her, I can't be racist and I know that. And I would never want to be even if, even if I chose to be. I couldn't. I don't want that for myself or for my children.
Okay, that was incredible. <laughs> okay, here's the only thing I have to say. If you are going to suggest content that is going to make me cry, I need like a cry warning, a tissue warning, so I can um, make sure to have like waterproof mascara on. Um, okay, I want to hear like, your gut feeling to this. Um, all right. I think it's really beautiful to know your ancestry and know where you come from and to have your parents raise you. And I'm speaking, um, not of the younger daughter, but of the older lady who was referring back to her mom and how she was raised to be connected to that. I think there's this tension of, you see these generations saw that picture of um, the older woman when she was a baby with her mom and her mom was so beautiful first off I'm just like stunned by her mom but there things are changing things are changing and what does that look like for the family um, as you get further and further away from certain ancestry and closer to different ancestry but then there's this other side of they're in an insular experience and what I mean by that is this town, I'm guessing, I haven't researched it, but I'm guessing based on my understanding of like the uh, Melungeons thing and Creole, like Creoles. Uh, okay, I didn't know this because I had a lot of trouble with my family tree and DNA until I found out that Creoles just keep marrying each other forever. Um, cousins marrying cousins marrying cousins. And that's why my DNA is so crazy and messed up where it's, it's all crisscross because it's such a tight community. And I think it's probably a tight community when you have these these very special mixed communities. And I don't mean special, not like they're better, but but it, it's not a one off. I mean these are these are communities that have been multi they've had multi multi generational mixing basically for a long time, and that's how my family ancestry is. Um, I have to go back quite a ways to be like I found a full blooded Choctaw ancestor, full blooded. Uh, African ancestor, full-blooded Spanish ancestor. Like, they're all a couple generations away. Um, but the, the experience of the family has been multi-generational mixed. And it seems to be very similar for this town. I don't know anything about this area. Um, I would love to hear if you have, you know, if you know a little bit about this town uh, or the Appalachian experience. But this is this was deep. It was deep. And on some level, I feel like I could look at it and be like, you lady, you check off whatever you want. Like you you do whatever you want. But I think we're coming up against this idea of the the cultural experience versus how you look. And I think uh I think this is gonna be more and more frequent where people have a connection to something from their grandparents or maybe even their great grandparents, but they don't they don't reflect that heritage as much anymore, but it's still a part of who they are. They have these, these cultural uh, touchstones. They have the language, they have this or that, um, but they don't, they don't look like they do. And you know, what do we like to do here in the United States or what do people like to do in general? We like to sort. Um, and when I was teaching my kids uh, very young, when they were very young, one of the first activities you teach a child is how to sort, right? You say like, put all of the square blocks here, put all of the balls here, put all of these things here. And, and I think, unfortunately, uh, we transfer that into interpersonal relationships sometimes and, and how we perceive others. Maybe it's not so bad. I don't know. I mean, this woman, uh, the older woman that was talking, she feels really strongly about who she is. And I really loved... <laughs> that gentleman, um, something he said was just kind of like, you got to just wait it out, just wait it out. And, and he's happy with who he is. And he doesn't seem to have that same sense of frustration. And I think this woman has, um, this is really interesting. Uh, and I think again, it really, it goes along with a lot of the content that I have been covering. Uh, the video that I just released was about, my great grandmother following her family through the census records. In the 1900 in Louisiana, they were black. In 1910, the next census, they were mulatto. In 1930, she was living in New York and she's white. Um, what does that even mean? <laughs> like, what does it mean? Uh, why do I keep hammering this on? Why do we keep talking about it? 
Well, for one, I think that it's really important to know your ancestry. Where do you come from? Uh, like, where, where do you belong in this long line of people? But on the other hand, I think it's important to kind of recognize it's okay if it doesn't fit perfectly into a box. That's okay. That's who you are. Um, you have a lot of things that are different than the people around you. And, and that's beautiful. And I feel like if we could just kind of look at it and say, hey, at least here, uh, we're all American. And being American means that we have a lot of multi-generational mixing of all kinds, you know, whether that means you have a lot of maybe Polish and Finnish, and that's the mix, or you have a lot of Italian and Irish, which a lot of people have back in New York. Uh, it's pretty much your Italian, Irish, Jewish mixed together, um, or whatever that looks like. It's going to look different in different parts of the country. And I would love to do a video looking at a map of the United States and kind of talking about the typical ethnic breakdown of different areas. And, and once you see it, it's pretty fascinating to see these pockets that have, there's a historical reason for it. You know, why do lots of people in uh, California have either Hispanic or Japanese ancestry? Well, there's historic precedent for why that is. Why are there so many Irish in Boston? Well, there's historic precedent for that. There's reasons for this stuff. And it's, it's interesting and it's beautiful. <sighs> this was really good. Um, I'm, I have no idea what you guys are going to think about this. I'm really looking forward to it. Let me know. And also, um, if you've been on the channel for a little while, I want to tell you that I'm working on something I think that's going to change direction a little bit. Um, not for this channel. I'm thinking about starting a second channel, uh, but I'm not totally sure. And I'm not, I'm not quite ready to like go public with what I'm thinking on that. So keep an eye out for that. I'd love to have you join me if I do that. Um, otherwise, let me know what you think and send me some more suggestions and we'll talk soon.